Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have David Goad and Eric Gray. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey guys, how's it going? Good, how are you? Yeah, we're good. Thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, of course. Anytime. Well, awesome. Well, let's get the show started. Tell us about you guys. What do you guys do? Um, how'd you guys get started? Let's just start from there. Do you want to take this, Eric? So, um, when I, I, I first started, um, I was a teacher. I was a special ed teacher um, in, in Dearborn at a place called Will, William Ford. Uh, and what ended up happening is, I don't know how much you know about being a teacher, but it's it's not really a livable income. So I, I started doing real estate on the side as well. And then it just just started picking up. And I, you know, I, I got so busy that I, you know, I was either doing a disservice to my students because I wasn't teaching them the like they deserve to be teacher. I was doing a disservice to my clients because I wasn't giving them everything they needed. So I had to make a decision, you know, which road I wanted to take. And here I am, <laughs> you know, the road I took. <laughs> That's so awesome. as for me, um, I started off as a project manager for a fortune 500 company um, called quest. And um, from that point, you know, I was working like 60, 70 hours a week, making a base salary and, you know, busting my tail. And then I was like, I, you know, I want to serve people. I want to be a part of something bigger. And I obviously can't do this at, in a, in a corporate setting. I got to do something on my own. So then I'm a, I'm a huge golfer. So I took it. Um, I was like, yeah, I got to do something I love, you know? So I, I want to teach, uh, I want to teach kids. So I started doing um, like golf lessons for a company out in Farmington Hills um, called Golf Leadership Academy. They're a great company. They do great things for kids. Um, they instill like leadership skills in like a younger generation um, to take pride in their work. So it's phenomenal what they do. And then I was like, well, I tried to do something I love, took a huge pay cut. And then I was like, my uncle or my wife's uncle, he was a broker in the real estate. And he's like, man, you, you know, everybody knows you, you got, you, you got to be a realtor. I'm like, dude, I, you know, I have no idea what to do. Yeah. So basically he's like, Hey, I'll, I'll teach you. I'll show you the ropes. So I got into real estate, like the first, first year. I mean, it was, it was a struggle. I mean, that's, you know, you hear realtors quit, quit all the time. And um, I think it took like six months, seven months to get my first deal. And then after that, I mean, it was just like, everything was flowing and now I'm, here with this guy over here and we're partnered up at uh real estate one and yeah we're so we're super excited so we're we're loving every minute of it that's awesome, awesome. did you guys yeah. know each other before partnering up or how did you guys kind of meet and how did that work out did you get were you guys friends know, beforehand or <laughs> so uh the, we we actually used a, a mutual inspector we both used the same inspector and okay. he took us he took us out on a, a golf outing and you know we met that way he's he's a good golfer he's good to have on your team so i was like yeah i got it oh god and it just we just i mean it we just clicked you know yeah and, and i know his um it's your brother yeah yeah i know i know his brother-in-law so we play a lot of golf together and then he was like oh yeah you guys would be great you know as a team and we're like whatever you know we'll, and so we we just tried out a couple of deals together. It just flowed really well. And yeah, we just jumped, just dove right in. You know what I mean? That's awesome. And then you guys both said that you came from teaching backgrounds too. How do you find that plays into what you guys do now? Cause I'm sure you guys are still teaching your clients, right? You guys are. Oh always, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Mean, I, I've had a lot of clients that have I mean, it, you, like, if you look on my Zillow, there's a ton of stuff that says, like, you know, they, they've taught me, you know, Eric's taught me more in a week than I learned with my past realtor in, like, six months, because that's, that's awesome. just natural to me. I just, I just like to teach, and I, I just like to go over the process. Here's what we're doing. This is what happens next. This is why it happens. So it's, yeah, I kind of incorporated teaching with real estate, in yeah. a sense. So, and I mean, and, you know, it's, teachers you, you have to be organized to be a teacher 
He's right. not organized though. <laughs> not, not at all. That's that's the real reason why he brought why me teaching on didn't work out, right? Is that the real reason? I think I'm <laughs> Dave doesn't think I'm no, organized. but in all in all like in all seriousness, like it's it's so I I do the keep it simple stupid method, right? Mm -hmm. Like you gotta tell these people, I mean, because they use you as your trusted, their trusted advisor, you know, and sometimes it's just dumb, I don't want dumbing it down to the so they understand it in a way to where it makes sense and it you yeah. know you make it fun for them you don't try to make it like well hey you got to do this and that and the other and everybody gets so stressed out you you just gotta yeah teach them coach them along the process and make it simple yeah absolutely especially with the paperwork side there's so much going on behind the scenes that maybe the new home buyer doesn't actually realize what all goes into it so breaking right. those steps down is so helpful mm -hmm. especially before exactly. you get to closing <laughs> Oh man. Well, having consultations <laughs> are like so important, right? Yeah. You, it, I feel like that's the one thing I thought for the industry is like the first time you meet somebody was at a house. Like, I feel like that's a little bit backwards, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of having them come in, at, like going over an entire, you know, process and telling them what it's going to be like. And then once you do that, it's all simple from there, you know, because they understand what's going on. And if they have questions, they know, know who to reach out to, when to reach out, all that. So it just, it, consultations are so important. Yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. Did you guys get any advice, uh, maybe when you were solo before you guys teamed up, that helped you along the way? Or maybe advice when you guys teamed up together? I would say for me, um, the best advice that I got was like actually just going through the deals, mm -hmm. um, going through the process. And in terms like from that, like I learned, you know, what, what I can do better, what I shouldn't, what I shouldn't do, stuff like that. But as for advice, I think it's, it's more hands-on. That's, that's when you learn the most, you know, at yeah. least for me. Yeah. I mean, just, just not cutting corners, yeah. you know, just, just doing the details in detail. Yeah. And I, I think what's important is, you know, what, you know, my past broker before this and my mentors here and, and my broker here all instilled in my head is that, um, you know, keeping in touch with your, your past clients and your sphere of influence and, you know, the advice they gave me on how to do it, you know, like, you know, people do postcards, email drips, like, I don't know if you know what Popeyes are, but just, you know, keeping in touch with your clients is, yeah. I, I, I feel like that was, you know, at the top of the best advice I, I received. That's awesome. What's yeah. your guys' favorite way to market right now? Because I know you probably like what you should be doing, but what's your favorite way? <laughs> Bunch oh, of different goodness. options out there. Yeah. I mean, there's so like, there's so many. Um, and, and that's kind of what Eric and I are really trying to focus on is because there's so many people that um, they focus on like real estate, right? And they pitch videos about real estate. And, and what we're trying, what we're in the background of is nobody really, like people need to understand what's going on in real estate, like mortgage rates and inventory and all this stuff, but nobody really everybody wants to go with you, right? Like, yeah, nobody's going to watch a 10 minute video of you explaining yeah. how real estate works. So we want yeah. to make it more fun. Like yeah. I, my, I, our favorite way of advertising, which we're trying to get better at and, and do more of our videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and like local, of, local restaurants, you know, like going to like those places and, you know, pr promoting those businesses. Um, I mean, we we're talking about like stupid dad jokes, you know, we're big family <laughs> guys. Like we just want people to understand who we are yeah. and real estate be a side, like a byproduct of what we do. Right. It's, I don't want to shove it down people's throats because that's when they're like, Oh, you're just another realtor trying to make a sale. Well, no, that's not the case. We're, we're two individuals We're two dads We're two, you know, and, and it's, what we do is we support our families and this is how we do it. And we're funny. We love, we love people and hopefully you come along for the ride. You know, like that's what we want our business to be. Yeah, absolutely. I love the dad joke idea too. That's going to show people you guys as true personalities <laughs> and then the business will just follow. So 
like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm definitely working with him. He's a cool dude. <laughs> yeah. So, That's Eric, awesome. I have a question for you for this next one. What is the worst property or showing that you've been to? What kind of stories do you oh. have for us? <laughs> well, one just comes to the top of my head, and it still gives me nightmares. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> so, I, I was showing a, a client. We went to a house down, down river, and... Um, you know, we went inside and there were cats. Like there were, I probably 15 cats and I'm not kidding, just everywhere. Like, you know, you'd look up on the TV, on the TV, you'd look on a light, it was sitting on a light. Like they were everywhere. So I was like, oh, okay, that's just kind of weird. There was, but <laughs> so we just kept walking and then we stepped on the carpet and I had shorts on. It was the middle of the summer. Um, and then I looked down at my legs and I was like, oh my God, like my legs have never been this hairy. Like why? Oh, no. <laughs> but then, then it looked like then it looked like hair was falling off. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> but it was just leaves all over, covered on my leg. Wow. Just jumping off my legs, like back on the carpet, back on my legs. Wow. Yeah, so we ran out of there like we were on fire on the porch. Like if neighbors saw us, man, we were like patting each other down. <laughs> Did you sell the house? Right, that was my question too. How'd that go? <laughs> we, we didn't even, we never looked back. Like and, we're out of here. Did you guys make it past the front entryway where the carpet no, was? We, no, we, we walked in, yeah. saw 15 cats, went on the carpet, saw a million fleas. And out of left. here. Yeah, even in my car, like, I, I mean, I had to go wash my car, you know, contemplated setting it on fire because I was, <laughs> like, there was just, like, I was still picking fleas off my leg. In the car? I in the, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't put him, I wouldn't put that past him either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I Eric, I take it you're not a bug guy. No. I mean, <laughs> bugs don't bother me, but the little ones that just... You yeah, especially when you got really, a ton of them. Yeah, There's probably thousands really too. That, that bugs me. Yeah. yeah. Bugs me. <laughs> I like it. I like nice it. Nice fun. One of those dad's jokes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So tell us about your guys' team. Do you guys like plan on venturing out and getting more people, or what do you guys got planned? Oh, boy. That's a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, You're like, we, we haven't talked about that yet, Matt. <laughs> the main goal is, so, and this is where our, our, our heads come together well, is, like, last year was, like, the greatest and the worst year of my life, yeah. you know, because I had so much business, you know, it was, like, awesome in that aspect. But then I also have a kid, you know, and I – it just, you know, he'd be like, daddy, let's play or something. And I was like, okay. And we play. And then I, you know, I, I had to do work and it's just, so we came together essentially so that, you know, we could still have the business, but we have more time for, you know, our families and, and to right. have a life. That's the ultimate goal is we, we, you know, we want to have a business and a life at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're, you know, we're trying to work that out to where, you know, we can, yeah, so we're definitely looking to add more people, um, but at the end of the day, it has to be you know the right fit the right for ones, what yeah. who, who we like, what we stand for, uh, what they stand for. I mean, that's just a really big part of like who Eric and I are. Um, we're all about family first, you know, business second, and um, it it's definitely a hard it's it's hard to figure out um like who you need when you need them and um you know the process behind all that stuff so there's a lot of stuff that's going to entail you know us sitting down and figuring that out but um yeah i mean that's that's ultimately the goal is to expand um expand our team for sure yeah that's awesome definitely hard to find that work-life balance especially with the market so crazy as this past couple years have been yeah, it's, it's nuts. And, and that's the thing. It's like you, cause that's our motivator, right? That's both. I mean, I don't want to speak for yeah. you, but like our motivator is our family. So right. we both work super hard because we want, you know, what's best for our family. But then at the same time, when you do draw in a good amount of business, like it's a lifestyle and people are reaching out to you. Like it doesn't matter what time of day it is. It's whatever's convenient for them mm -hmm. to reach out to you. Right. And they expect you to respond. So it's always, that's always a, 
a tough thing to handle. So it's just trying to develop a, a business plan around that so that we can kind of handle that situation, you know, those situations. Yeah. When you guys do expand, do you think you'll add on for your first hire, maybe like an admin or another agent? Um, it's probably going to be like a dual, right? Yeah. So like admin slash um, buyer's agent mm -hmm. as like somebody that can uh, take on like pay like their license so that they can handle the paperwork. And then um, the, if we need somebody to show a house or two for us, we can have them show a house. And Yeah, absolutely. That. That'll save you guys a ton of time, especially oh, yeah. just having a third person to yeah. go out and do showings. Especially yeah, and with then their we last can focus minute. more on, you know, marketing and getting right. more business. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys could start over today, um, what would you do differently? Off of everything you guys have learned solo and as a team, what would what's one thing you each would do separately, differently to start over again? I mean, I would have started earlier. Well, okay. <laughs> so, I, I mean, for me, like, honestly, I look at it as a journey. So I don't think I would have done anything differently um, because I feel like that's how you learn from your past. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, we all wish we could have done something like earlier or whatever, but I think personally, like that's where I've learned so much, like being by myself on my first deal, trying to make something happen. Like that's when, you know, you get so nervous and frustrated and all the emotions. And now it's, you know, fast forward three, almost four years later. And it's like, it's just, it's part of who you are now and what you do and how you handle situations. So I wouldn't really change it, you know? Yeah, David, I know you mentioned earlier when we were talking, it took about six, seven months for you guys, for you to get your first deal. How did that first um, closing go for you? Was it smooth? Um, yeah, actually, it was it was very smooth. Yeah. Um, it was a, a family member, so I had to make sure it was okay. as smooth as possible. <laughs> Didn't have any options for it not to be smooth, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Eric? How long did it take you to get your first listing? And how did that one go? <laughs> that's, a, that's a big dog oh, okay, okay okay but i i i actually had a client before i was licensed they knew i was getting licensed okay. and uh they you know they were reaching out and they they waited you know they reached out to me like a week before i got my license and uh so then right when i got my license i showed them houses and great probably, yeah like the third or fourth house uh we we made an offer and that's awesome. and i mean your, your first deal, you know, you, you have your mentors and your broker and everybody working with you. So it, I mean, it, they typically go pretty smooth and mm -hmm. it was, you know, they were great buyers, like 800 credit, like, you know, so it was, yeah, yeah, it was easy peasy. Were you nervous? Peasy. Yeah. very yeah. Nervous. <laughs> so He when, still gets nervous all the time. Yeah. So, don't let him <laughs> so they, they would like call me and call they would ask me you know, ask me questions, you know, like, and I'm like, it was like, sometimes I thought they were speaking Chinese and I had to like, right. Uh, let me, you know, I'll, I'll call you right back. And so I'd have to call my broker, get the answer, call them back. And there was times I was like, there's no way, there's no way they're going to keep using me. Like, I don't even know any <laughs> answers to these questions, but it, it all worked out. And like Dave said before, I mean, that's like, that's how you learn. And, you know, yeah. you, you, you got to go through the trials and tribulations. So. And they must have known that you were newer too, because they waited for you. David, yeah, they when, yeah. yeah it, was, it was a referral from a guy that I used to play softball with. That, okay. That he must have talked me up. But. Well, he said he was horrible <laughs> at softball, but he might be a better real estate general. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Do you guys get to go on golf outings? I know, David, you said you, you're a big golfer. Do you guys get to go do those a lot? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we try to um, definitely to support, you know. Uh, and now local. Eric just called you out, David. How How's his golfing skills? Oh, <laughs> um, how's Eric's golfing yeah. skills? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, talk about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first to admit they're not great. That's but why you're a team, fun. right? That's why you're a yeah, team. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, that's, why, that's why I have them on my scrambles. So. Yep, exactly. <laughs> That's Do you awesome. guys have any business books that you guys could recommend to maybe anybody starting out? Um, mine would be uh, The Power of Habit. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Charles. Uh, gosh, I can't think of his last name right now. 
but it's it's a phenomenal book. It just talks about how to, you know, transform habits and and follow through with that stuff. And in in creating creating habits is so important. Um, and how to break habits is so important. Um, I mean, because life, I mean, life's not easy, right? So we we develop certain kinds of habits, and um, it's just it just happens. So but there's like science behind how you can break those habits and how you can, you know, form yourself into be a, being a better person. And I mean, continuous improvement on yourself is always just something that, um, I mean, I, I think is so important because we're always trying to get better every day. Obviously we're never going to be perfect, but I mean, as long as you can keep pressing on and trying to become a better version of yourself the next day, it's just always the best thing to do. Yeah, mine would. I'm pre, I'm sure somebody's probably said this before, um, but it would be millionaire real estate agent. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it just goes down. It it breaks down from like the, when you first start real estate yeah. all the way to ends with like starting a team and how you start. Why so you trying to start? it just goes through like <laughs> everything. So I mean, it was it was an awesome book. That's awesome. I like it. How can people get a hold of you guys? Um, so for me, I, I have, I mean, I can give you guys my cell phone and my email. Um, they can check us out on, we're, we're in the process of, of branding, right? We're coming up with our new tagline is simply sold with uh, gray and gold. That's our new kind of like slogan slash logo. So we're working on branding that, but my cell phone is uh, 313-319-7688. Um, and my email currently is uh, David at I think go with go. How can I get a hold of us? Yeah, like that. Oh. Emails <laughs> and phone numbers, right? Yeah. So can I finish my email? <laughs> All ahead. right, thanks. Uh, so it's David <laughs> at go with So it's G O W I T H G O A D dot com. David at go with com. How about you, Eric? How can clients get a hold of you? Um, it's basically the same. I mean, I, I get a lot of contact on uh, Facebook. They'll Facebook message me. Okay. Uh, message me. Um, and then basically, I mean, it's just. So how can they find you on Facebook? My cell phone. Eric Gray Holmes. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, there we go. There we go. So we look for the smoke signals too? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, awesome. But, hey, thanks guys for coming on and uh, sharing your story with us today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you guys. All right. Thank you, guys. Are these working? There right. we go. Oh, there we go. I think they're working. Should we tell oh, them? Uh, mine keeps falling. It doesn't like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we do? We got to point out? Hey, I think there's a subscription button. Like, it might be. It might be there. It might be right there, too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. It's and red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess uh I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah, I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. We should probably tell them also give us a five-star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't take but, four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this No, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. Yeah.